All right, guys. Well, we are back. We are back in the new abnormal. That's uh, the new abnormal of the smokeolopolypse. Smoke. Smoke. Smokeopolypse. Uh, it is now a dreary Monday afternoon. A dreary Monday, July 17th, 2023. It is a roasting 82 degrees there in New York, baby, as we plow through the smoke. I need to... Uh, my <clears throat> sister and her husband are arriving tomorrow from Vermont to get away from all of the, the mud slides in Vermont and this is what they have waiting for them in New York baby it's just you know <laughs> from mud slides to wildfire smoke uh, there you go there cannot be a better illustration of the summer of 2023 but anywho I'm just going to uh, tell a story here about a chapter from my past I was reading this essay this anti-natalist essay by Crystal Rivers on medium.com today and uh, in that story, she mentioned Hyacinth McCall's, uh, you know, I'm a call, I'm a call with, you know, those big ass parrots that live down there in Latin America. She mentioned uh, Hyacinth McCall's. I'm not going, you can find <coughs> more about those Hyacinth McCall's elsewhere in the Domosphere, but uh, it just reminded me of. Uh, a chapter from my own past. This is in 2009. Good Lord, has it been 14 years since I was down there in Costa Rica in 2009 where I signed up to volunteer for a McCall rescue operation. I don't even know if they're still in business, if the McCall rescue operation is still going on down there. But one of the things, the thing that I was, part I was involved in, most interested in, is where they were reintroducing, reintroducing, I, I just love that term, these uh, scarlet macaws, you know, the giant red ones with the blue, you know, the, you know, the big red and blue scarlet macaws. We all know what a scarlet macaw is. So anyway, they used to be flying all over southwestern uh, Costa Rica, kind of right where Costa Rica and meets up with Panama in the southwest corner of Costa of, of mainland Costa Rica. I'm not talking the Osa Peninsula. I'm talking mainland Costa Rica and the I guess that would be the northwest corner of Panama um, where there were still a large population of indigenous people uh, down there living uh, I mean, obviously not living in any sort of, uh, y you know, traditional villages or anything like that. They had been fully acculturated, is that the word, acculturated to uh, living with, uh, living with and living like the second wave of invaders from Europe. Uh, so anyway, I'm down there in 2009 working, uh, and I think the name of the town, if I remember, was Punta Banco. Punta Banco. Uh, 
Costa Rica. And so what we were doing is that these were hand-raised baby macaws. They had been born in captivity and raised in captivity. And I was always a little, uh, just not quite buying it, but uh, being an apocaloptimist like I was, I used to be an apocaloptimist back in 2009 when I was first starting down the Doomer rabbit hole, and I actually believed that uh, clueless moron humans could raise a macaw uh, in captivity and somehow train it to be a wild bird uh, in the in the jungles of Costa Rica without the parent bird being involved anywhere in the process. I just I, I just went along with this program. So anyway, uh, this other dude and I, we were assigned. Uh, it was eight. Uh, McCall's as I recall I don't know if it was four males and four females can't remember that part I do know my favorite one uh, his name was Don Quixote Don Quixote uh, <laughs> he, he was a he was a character so anyway so we go out there and I guess it was if I recall correctly. It was somewhere around a six-week training where, you know, we, we put these uh, macaws in this big aviary, this big fenced-in uh, aviary. I don't know, maybe this thing was 300 feet long, 100 feet wide, and 30 feet tall trying you know to get them used to where they could be flying around like wild uh, macaws in, in the rainforest and just you know with little human contact as possible that we would slip in uh, each to twice a day once in the morning and once in the evening we would slip into their enclosure and uh, feed them food, which we actually got from the uh, the eco lodge uh, <laughs> down the at the bottom of the mountain. I'm not real sure how giving uh, eight hand raised macaws. Uh, table scraps from an eco lodge is exactly teaching them to forage in a natural rainforest uh, for themselves but I I anyway I went along with the program I did not stick my negativity in into this like going guys there there is no chance th th this is th th this is gonna work and uh, so two years of hard work had gone into these birds. We figured uh, each one of these birds probably had about two thousand dollars sunk into it in two years of uh, hard work. You know, volunteer hours going into uh, reintroducing these eight. Uh, scarlet macaws back into an area where they had already been exterminated to extinction years before and this is always my question but nobody wants to hear the negative doomer that if it's already if whatever it is macaws rhinos whatever the hell it is that that, that you're reintroducing into the same area where humans have already killed every one of these things, whatever it is, uh, decades before, and humans are still living there. What possibly 
makes any clueless moron uh, believe, I don't care how good their intentions are, why would any clueless moron believe that uh, it's not just going to happen all over again? But anyway, I just went right on smoking that hopium and uh, trying to get used to Don Quixote and his seven cohorts uh, used to being a wild macaw after being, you know, raised by humans for two years. And uh, I was not there the night. My buddy, we would switch off uh, nights. So I don't know whether I'm glad it was my buddy. Uh, and I think I'm glad it was my buddy where Don Quixote was attacked by a boa constrictor in the middle of the night and all of the squawking from the other macaws wakes my buddy up and he runs out there and Don Quixote is, is literally being strangled to death uh, by a boa constrictor and uh, my buddy just, just had to grab the snake and cut its head off with a uh, butcher knife uh, and unbelievably Don Quixote survived being attacked by that boa constrictor. And so anyway, the big day came and we just drew lots and guess who came up first was Don Quixote. Don Quixote was the first, uh, first one of these birds we released. And uh, so, you know, they had these little radio transmitters on them so we could follow their movements, you know, to see how far they, you know, where they were settling down in the rainforest. And uh, so we have the big celebration and Don Quixote flies off to much raucous cheering from, uh, from both human and fellow macaw and uh, you all know where this story is heading. That on day four, his radio transmitter just fell silent. He was the last seen, you know, in one of these indigenous neighborhoods, uh, probably, you know, swooping in on some uh, Indian. Uh, to, to look for a handout because he had no idea how to forage for food and so he saw one of these noble savages sitting there eating a you know eating a damn banana or a papaya or whatever and Don Quixote just swooped in uh, who knows what the hell happened and that was the last we ever heard from Don Quixote and uh, you know how this story goes. And uh, ditto for McCall number two, ditto for McCall number three, ditto for McCall number four, and that's when uh, I just couldn't take it anymore. I, you know, I, I was saying, guys, we are sending these birds to their deaths. What the hell? Uh, have we been thinking for two years? And uh, I just quit in disgust and moved on down to the Peruvian Amazon to uh, live with a bunch of Save the Planet uh, Amazon Indians. Uh, but anyway, that was, uh, that was the opening chapter. Uh, you know, up until 2009, you know, when I was 50 years old, uh, I was, you know, as much as anyone, I was one of these little lefties uh, suffering, you know, from the myth of the noble savage. Well, uh, Don Quixote was where I first started questioning the myth of the noble savage and uh, you can read my book, Peruvian Plunge. Uh, you can 
if you really want to listen to my book Peruvian Plunge uh, you can find it over there on that other channel which I guess I can uh, say again is Humpty Dumpty Tribe you can go over to Humpty Dumpty Tribe and uh, listen to a reading of Peruvian Plunge when uh, among other things I talk about when the myth of the noble savage uh, was forever buried and um, you know humans are humans humans are humans we are killers we're bloodthirsty savages that's what we are that's what we do deal with it uh, but anywho's I just thought of that story and thought I would share it with you as I'm driving through the smoke to uh, go buy some uh, limeade for my margaritas to share with my sister and her husband in the smoke. Get out there and rescue some macaws while you still can. Bye guys. <laughs>